Hey curl friends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee today and today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of deep conditioning. Yes, you could be doing it wrong. Okay, maybe not wrong per se, but there are things that you can be doing in your deep conditioning days to make sure you're getting the full potential of your deep conditioner. Now, I actually came across this article on naturallycurly.com, which is an amazing website with everything you need to know about naturally curly hair. There's some great articles on there, definitely recommend it. And this one was called The Do's and Don'ts of Deep Conditioning Your Hair. And then I saw that it was actually written by somebody that I know, should have known because it was written so well. So this was written by Christina Patrice, who is also known as the main objective on Instagram and here on YouTube. And she made a great chart breaking it down. So I thought the article was so good that I wanted to share that with you guys today and kind of give my two cents and kind of co-sign everything that she's saying. I will make sure to put her full article down below in the description box. Make sure you guys read it and check it out and follow her at main objective here on YouTube and Instagram. Now the first thing at the very top of her list is Deep Condition Weekly. Wow! Where have we heard that one before? Oh yes, here on my channel. If you guys are new to my channel, I am doing a deep conditioning challenge where I'm challenging all of you guys to deep condition your hair every single week for a full year. And then I want you guys to show me your before and afters and I promise you, you will see a dramatic change in your hair. And Christina also believes you should be deep conditioning once a week. But if you have very dry hair, you even can bump it up to twice a week. One of the deep conditioning don'ts is to not overdo it. I personally always do my deep conditioning treatments for 20 minutes and that's all I really need. Some of you I know like to do a good overnight deep conditioning treatment which may work for somebody, but I personally have read on several different articles, including this one, that after 20, 30 minutes, it's not really doing anything anymore. Like you've drained all the nutrients you can get out of the deep conditioner after about 20, 30 minutes, and then it's just kind of sitting on your head for no reason. Christina even said, if your deep conditioner is not making your hair more moisturized after 20, 30 minutes, then you need to get a new deep conditioner because it's not doing its job. No one knows your hair like you do. So if you decide to do a deep conditioning treatment for 20 minutes and you notice that your hair is kind of whatever, but then when you do it overnight, your hair is beautiful, then you figured out what works for you and then you can continue to do so. But really pay attention. If you don't really notice a difference between 20 minutes and eight hours of sleep, save your pillowcases and don't waste your time. The next do is to add heat. I know, I know, I know. Don't freak out. I'm not saying to straighten your hair. That's still a no-no. We're not straightening our hair anymore, right? Okay, good. Um, but what I do mean is that when you are deep conditioning, it actually is okay to allow some heat to open up the hair shafts of your hair, allowing all the deep conditioner to actually penetrate into the hair shaft. Now what I use is a hot head. This is by Thermal Hair Care Heat Caps and it's a reversible flaxseed type cap that you can heat up in the microwave and then deep condition with this on. Warming up your deep conditioner and allowing it to really penetrate in your hair. These are pretty affordable. I believe they're like 25 bucks. I'll put a link below for you guys, but I use this every time I deep condition. If you don't have a heat cap or own a big old steamer, another option that Christina recommended was to put your deep conditioner in a hot bowl of water. That's actually going to heat up the conditioner so that way you can apply it onto your hair while the conditioner is warm, also opening up that hair shaft and adding a little bit of heat to your deep conditioning treatment. I haven't tried that one yet, but I definitely plan to. Another tip on this chart was to balance out your protein and your moisture. It is okay to do a deep conditioning treatment every week, but it is not really recommended to do a protein treatment every week. There is such thing as too much protein. You can get like a protein overload. You might become protein sensitive or you may already be protein sensitive. So I and both Christina would recommend alternating between your deep conditioners and your protein treatment. Deep condition one week, protein treatment the next. I probably use a protein treatment like once a month. I'm starting to think that I may be protein sensitive. I'm gonna do some more research on that and get back to you guys on a full protein sensitive video. But I don't really need too much protein. Protein is really good if your hair has a lot of damage 
or breakage and you have really weak hair, you need to like build the strength of those bonds, that's when you wanna use a protein treatment. Another big don't in the deep conditioning world is to not invite bacteria to your hair. Now you might be thinking, how do we do that? Now, if you're making a DIY hair mask that's not gonna last forever, make sure you keep that in the refrigerator and only keep it for about a week because then it will go bad and you don't wanna just add fungus to your hair. Store-bought products have special ingredients in them to help with the shelf life of it, making the ingredients like last longer so you don't have to just throw away all your product after a week. So that's what store-bought products contain. But if you're making it straight from scratch at home with like eggs, mayonnaise, milk, avocado, I don't even know what, that stuff's gonna go bad eventually. So depending on what's in it, you really only wanna keep it for a couple of days, keep it refrigerated, but make sure you always do a little Smell test first and make sure it's not too funky and make sure you don't see little green or black things floating around in there. Another deep conditioning do would be to apply your deep conditioner to your ends. Your ends are gonna be the driest part and also the, where you get split ends and any breakage. So you wanna really heavily apply all that deep conditioner to your ends, give it the most loving. Now, Christina even recommended to apply it to your ends first and then move your way up. I also am guilty of just slapping it on top and then moving it down but it really does make sense to switch that. One of the biggest deep conditioning don'ts is don't blow your budget. I could not agree more with this point. There are so many different deep conditioners now that the curly natural world has evolved into what it is today that you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money. One, there's definitely DIYs you could just do with ingredients that you make at home, but there are drugstore and high-end products that could work just as well as long as you find the right one for your or hair type. Don't just think that if you go to Sephora or Ulta that that mask is necessarily going to be a million times better because it's more expensive than the ones you find in the drugstore. If you're looking for a really good high-end deep conditioner, I'd recommend Diva Curl or Briogeo. And if you're looking for a affordable drugstore one, I'd recommend Shea Moisture, Cantu, or Maui Moisture. But with that being said, that actually brings me to the last point on this list, which is don't be fooled. Just because a deep conditioner is like $40, that does not necessarily mean that it's better than your $5 deep conditioner that you got at Walmart. You really need to pay attention to the ingredients. As you start learning more about what products are in your deep conditioners, you might just hold up your cheap deep conditioner next to your expensive deep conditioner and realize that they have the same ingredients. Now, I really think Christina nailed it on the head with this chart that she made about all the do's and don'ts on deep conditioning. The only one that I would personally add as a curly girl is to make your life more easier and convenient when doing your weekly deep conditioning treatments. I always like to do a hair mask and a face mask at the same time. So if you're gonna spend 20 minutes on your hair and you can't really go out or do anything, you might as well spend 20 minutes on your face at the same time. So if you follow me on Instagram or Snapchat, you will see that I always do Mask Mondays where you will see me put on a face mask and a hair mask and you're killing two birds with one stone. So these are all the curly do's and don'ts of deep conditioning. I hope you guys found this article and this video helpful. If you learned a thing or two, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week. Make sure you check out the full article on naturallycurly.com and also follow main objective for weekly curly tips. If you wanna know more about the deep conditioners that I use or my deep conditioning challenge, make sure you check out my curly hair playlist and you can learn everything you need to know about curly hair. I promise I answer all questions on this channel, you're in the right spot. So hit that subscribe button and come back next week for more videos. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.